I'm going to read some poems from Look, 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 um, which is a collection that started because I became a parent and it was terrifying. Um, it was a really um, overwhelming experience and I felt a little bit um, betrayed by the sisterhood that um, I knew all of these women who had not warned me um, about like what was coming. And so um, my first child was a daughter and I thought like, I have to write this down because maybe all, maybe all the women just forget or something um, because I want her to know. Um, and while it started that way, it really became more of a project of me explaining my own circumstances to myself as a way to sort of puzzle through um, this very strange time. So I'm gonna start with a poem um, that is set shortly after my daughter was born. Um, and the thing that I found really strange was to go from being two people in one body to being two people in separate bodies. So that was a really alarming, um, bewildering shift for me. Um, so this is Peace of Rock. The mother is relieved when the husband accompanies the daughter for the bath, when they take the daughter away to check and recheck her weight. In the room, the daughter's body is a balloon, body divided. The daughter needs all the air. The mother tells no one. The mother's body pushes towards some other shape, squeezing the loss, diamond-like, until the emptiness can be cut. The mother sets an alarm to remember to feed the daughter, another to look for more air. The mother stops speaking, tries to inhale less. All slender bruise, the daughter turns yellow. The husband changes her diapers, learns to swaddle her body in receiving blankets. She yellows. The heel pricks begin. The husband goes with her, holds her slip of a body as she meows. In the empty room, the mother keeps her hands on her belly, tries to touch the daughter through the skin. This is regeneration. Woman, be permeable. Be ocean, be habitat. Instead of woman, say starfish. Find a tide pool. New limbs in place of those you've lost, as if misplaced, as if not dead, as if not plucked from your body, as if not woman. Crawl away with what remains. Sink, scale, absorb each place. Woman, cover your arms in starfish. Wear them across your chest, latched into your hair, be invisible, be seen. Let the salt crack across your skin. Cradle the water, what flows in and back. Watch for reflexes. There will be enough love, enough everything, they say in support group. There will be enough. But woman, woman, keep track of your arms. Um, this next one is my ode to breastfeeding support group. So, yay, that. Um, mantra. Before the birth, twice the body, doubled blood volume. Your body is not your own, the women laugh. Later in the hospital basement, women sit in a circle nursing. They could be knitting, could be planning a war. Pink purple mouths at their breasts, the latch, the drain, what you keep alive. They could recite, your body is not your own, but everyone already knows. They could chant, but who has the time? The bloodletting, cream drips onto the floor. The extra plasma and the hearts return to rhythm and the women like normal, double mouthed and thirsty. The vault. About the faulty air conditioner, about the freezer door that won't close, about the cold that won't stay put. She has to live in the world. Energy, frequency, vibration, Woman, what do you want? She reads about mines in, ma in a magazine. The turquoise pools left behind, the extraction and minerals had a peel into the earth's crust like skin and abandoned the gash. You can look, the voices say, but all the jewels have been harvested, set in another crown. They say delicate, hidden, when building means taking away to strip. Her milk drips on pearl after pearl. She is not a disease. She gives over to the daughter the way the daughter finally gives over to sleep. She calls out for the body that has gone missing for what has been carved away. Rattle woman, make the noise. Um, so when I was writing these poems, I was finding that there were some things that were really hard to say. And that's, I think, 
the, the thing that poems are good at, right? Is maybe saying the thing that's, that's really hard to say. Um, so I found myself relying on some tools of surrealism to say the things that were hard to say, but also thinking a lot about how different pronouns made it possible to say some things that were harder to say, um, like as an I, that I could say as a she or a you. Um, so I'm gonna read a couple poems that maybe demonstrate some of those strategies. Um, they're also about um, miscarriage, which historically has been a thing that's difficult to talk about. Um, and I think um, it's okay for things to be hard to talk about, but when we can't talk about them, then they start to get associated with shame. Um, and that's, that's a problem. So these are poems that are maybe working against those things. Road construction. A woman has commandeered all the traffic cones. No one knows where to drive, how to maneuver through holes where the intersection used to be. She keeps them in the basement and in her attic, stares at reflective strips lining her bookshelves until she memorizes the hazards. She wants a new rocking chair. Less celebration than so much rubber or plastic, she calls out to the horns, I am all for the music, and then turns her arms into cradles. Remnants. Each form she fills out asks for the number of pregnancies and the number of live births. Even at the optometrists, the numbers don't match. She reminds the husband to condition the brown leather couch, to cover the blood stains, but he runs out of cream, forgets to go to the store. They pretend the marks are lemonade, olive oil, pasta sauce. She is always spilling. The first child is always sticky with peanut butter. When the second child dies, before he is born, before he had fingerprints, when he was a kidney bean or a kumquat with webbed fingers, the third child becomes the second child. She pretends to have forgotten the thud and splash as she scrambled to the toilet, bleeding like a dog, the horrible resolved decision to flush. The way when she first heard, she felt better. How after she had nothing to hold. The third child, that is the second child, any day now. She smiles like people do when they say that. She thinks about the gray strings of tissue that took weeks to leave her body, the way something can die and be dead and not thought of for a long time, except how it changes the words how you could read the future, study the tissue like tea leaves, and watch it change. Um, this poem is called To Hide, and it's about the moment that I realized my toddler daughter um, was starting to internalize um, cultural rules about gender and behavior, um, and that I had thought like maybe I could stop that from happening, um, and, and couldn't. To Hide. She looks at me, face set, resisting the impulse to crumble. Already she knows which tears to hide, how to keep her eyes wide and press her lips together. My daughter, I think, kneeling before her as if she is an altar, you are upset. How she finally chokes against my shoulder, how she wants permission to feel, or a place, a name for her pain and a body that pretends strength, which promises to keep her whole. My daughter, I think later, as I sit on the lid of the toilet while her brother thrashes inside my belly, sobbing into a bath towel so they won't hear in the other room. All the broken bodies, the wet eyes of my mother, of her mother. I kneel, terry cloth in my mouth, but I don't know who is the prayer and who is the God. What am I supposed to promise? My mother, she is singing now, running at the door. Where is my mother? Illusion for a while. I put on the body, the permission while it lasts. Um, and my daughter was born ancient. She's a really old soul. Um, her preferred term for me is mother. Um, I tried to go for like mama or mommy for a long time, um, but she calls me mother, which always, there's a lot of glances at the grocery store when your little five-year-old is like, mother. Um, the speaker of these poems starts to find a little bit more agency um, and claim a little bit more agency with the birth of the second child. Um, so I thought what I'd read now is the birth story of my son. Um, and this is really how it happened. Release. I initial here and here, endorse the consent so I can get back to my body as if the son cares about letter work, 
about letters as if paperwork can contain this wave. My body has its own permission. The nurse wants me to lie down. I have been fully informed, the forms say. Indeed, this time I kneel on the bed, face the wall. I growl and bear, my body yawning as the sun slips out. The nurse is surprised. The closest doctor pulled from the hallway, arms out and still shouting, do you intend to give birth in this position? Do you intend to give birth in this position? This time I look at the placenta. I look at the stained sheets. This time I look at the baby. Even when I roll over, pull him to my chest, I am on my knees, always these days on my knees, the sun and I signed in blood. I have read and understand. This time I cut the cord myself. Quick change. She keeps her body around the house. There is body in the coat closet, in the hall by the front door, body under the bed in plastic bins, a pile in the garage by the recycling, the spares she calls them. She misplaces her body like she misplaces her keys. She releases it, lets her body carry her from this room to that, lets her body stretch until it must be replaced. It is better this way, she says, slipping into a fresh one as the baby cries, and never have to worry about being recognized. Got just a couple more. Um, this one is called Lina Nigra. It's a little vocabulary lesson. Uh, the Lina Nigra is the line um, down the belly that um, is left when the abdominal muscles start to separate to make room for, um, for a baby. Um, so this poem is about that line. Um, and most of the time, um, muscles come back together just fine, and sometimes they don't. Lina Nigra. This could be the poem about how the poem is a child and the child is the poem, but that would be bullshit. The dark line down my belly doesn't go away. What wants to be a lie or at least a myth, but isn't this place where my body split open for another body. The poem in that, I say to the midwife as she pokes my belly, feels the muscles that have separated, measures the distance between rect and full. What a fucking metaphor, I tell the husband later ignoring the surgery pamphlet on the table, the picture of a man and his needle, my hands at my belly button holding my insides together. I am this splitting, the exhausted gap. I am scar, I am pieces. The body as the poem, what won't grow back. Um, this next poem, um, comes from where my children were born, which is Kansas. Uh, the poem's called Tornado. Lots of storms there in Kansas. Um, they are not very worried about the storms in Kansas. And as a non-native Kansan, that's a little alarming. Um, there aren't a lot of places to hide in tornadoes. They don't have a lot of basements, um, that kind of thing. So there are often these safe rooms, these like small steel boxes that people put in their garage, um, shelters, that kind of thing. So um, this is a poem that's about vulnerability, about what it means to have to keep other people alive. Tornado. I insist on a safe room, something guaranteed to stand the wind. This is life on the prairie, I say. The men bring bolts, drive rebar through concrete. We make everything hard. The steel room out in the garage, loaded with gallons of water, the extra pairs of shoes, the threat. I know a mother who plans to tip the dryer over her children during a storm. What can I do, she says, and we all nod. The weather is easy enough. After the children are asleep, I make dinners for the week and freeze them. I refill the soap dispensers. I sort laundry as if I can hold back the threat. I curl against the tile floor in the kitchen and stay up late making lists, drawing maps. When I mistake the wind for a woman weeping, I wake the husband. Where can I get more steel, I ask him, my fingers on the baby's chest, counting breaths. And this will be my last one. Um, this is taking care. I sit with my grief, I mother it. I hold its small, hot hand. I don't say, shh, I don't say it is okay. I wait until it is done having feelings. And we stand and we go wash the dishes. We crack open bedroom doors, step over the creeks, and kiss the children. We are sore from this grief, like we've returned from a run, like we are training for a marathon. 
I'm with you all the way, says my grief, whispering. And then we splash our face with water and stretch one big shadow and one small. Thanks so much. <laughs>